All right, so I'm gonna do my rap region. So I did uh, West Coast. Oh, God damn it. I was gonna say I did East Coast to make you think that like we both did East Coast, but I just read out West Coast. <laughs> Fucked it up. Wouldn't have trolled me anyway. <laughs> what would you have done though? Just done more. I've spilled so much on my pants. Yeah, you get fucking trolled. So West Coast hip hop actually originated from some white from some riots, specifically the Watts riots in 1965. Watts is a 10 minute drive north of Compton, uh, similar to what Compton faced when NWA rose to fame, which I will get into later. The Watts riots were fueled by racist police officers. Yep. The riots ended with 30 dead. 1,000 injured and 3,000 arrested. Two years later, 1967, the Watts Writers Workshop was born. It was an organization created by Bud Schulberg, who was a screenwriter and producer, and it was an attempt to peacefully express residents' rage against the racist police force. Within this group arose the Watts Prophets, consisting of four poets who combined their experiences and styles to create a new form of music. Spoken word. Thanks, Matt. Spoken word over a jazzy musical. Too jazzy? <laughs> Their most known song came out <clears throat> in 1970. What is a man? They argued that the riots were justified and that the US should spend their time trying to solve their own problems before fooling around on the moon and looking for other places to conquer, referring to Vietnam. They point out America's tendency to solve the problems of other countries before solving their own. Throughout the song, the line, I threw another log on the fire, was repeated, referring to the controversy that they were creating. NWA played a huge part in popularising West Coast hip-hop. Coming out in the late 1980s, they were originally formed after Easy e bailed Dr. Dre out of jail with money he made from selling drugs. Together, they made Ruthless Records, and originally only had Dre and DJ Yella on production, and then Ice Cube, MC Ren, and Arabian Prince on the vocals. But the group was not complete until a very reluctant Easy e jumped on. They were banned from mainstream radio and they did not win any music awards due to the abrasiveness of their lyrics. In the early 1990s, the group began to feud and fall apart. They began to crumble and eventually ended in 1995 due to the unfortunate passing of Easy e During the same time, Tupac was blowing up. At just 17 years old in 1988, he moved to California and almost immediately became the face of West Coast hip hop. Born into a family of Black Panthers, he grew up on political activism and adapted their violence is acceptable when necessary attitude. He was the epitome of contradiction, a rapper, a ballet dancer, activist, philosopher, poet, and an actor. And a barista. I don't know about that one. Hotel Trivaga. <laughs> I didn't actually know this, but he died at 25. Yeah, Parky. Yeah, that's young. Yeah, rip. That's really young. Um, he was a gangster that was all about that thug life, but he also had many emotional and extremely vulnerable tracks. He actually began his career as a roadie for Digital Underground and eventually rapped on one of their songs. He then released Two Pocalypse Now, or Two Pacalypse Now. <laughs> which was his first album. It received very little attention. Over the next seven years, he released 44 singles, five studio albums, with all of them making an appearance on Billboard. He was nominated for seven Grammys. He unfortunately didn't win any, but he did win an American Music Award. One of hip hop's biggest tragedies and mysteries happened September 7, 1996. Tupac was assassinated. After that, though, his success did not slow down. Another five posthumous albums were released, and he was one of the first to get the holographic treatment at Coachella in 2012. Like, I can't think of anyone else who's actually gotten the holographic treatment. I'm sure other people have. Not sure. But he was definitely, like, 
one of the first. At the same time, as well as like a little bit after NWA, came along Snoop Dogg, E-40, and The Game. Snoop Dogg has what is named the most popular rap song of the decade by Billboard themselves. Drop It Like It's Hot, featuring Pharrell Williams, is now a Californian anthem. This next part sounds like an insult, but it greatly affected hip-hop, and this is the reason that the genre is the way that it is right now. Snoop Dogg was one of the pioneers in writing meaningless songs. I don't like, I don't rate to, uh, Snoop Dogg. I'm going to say it right now. <laughs> I don't rate him. He has one good album one, out of like two, 14. Three into the four. <laughs> yes, one good album out of like 14. <laughs> like, people hate on Eminem. But he has like at least five out of like ten good albums. Snoop Dogg has one good album. And it was his first. Like he didn't make anything good after that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if um, he cut it off after one. You'll hear about that later. The one album. Oh yeah. In the later show. Mm. You already told him we cooked it out of order. so. But they're not even going to hear that till the end. No, no. I said that on the first oh, show. Oh, you said that in the yeah. first show? Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, then E-40, although he never garnered national success, he was always a relevant artist throughout his entire career, now being one of the faces of the Bay Area rap. The game, however, started out a little bit later, after NWA fell apart. He was originally just a gang member. He's sh- shit, he's blood chilling, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he was originally just like a, a gangbanger, like performing drug runs, drive fires and it wasn't until he was shot five times that he began to rap. It was shot, at, the article said, after a bad, after a business deal went wrong. A uh, business deal. Yeah. What a businessman he is. <laughs> um, he was actually presumed dead after he was shot, but after a three-day coma, he began to recover. I didn't know that. I knew yeah. he got shot, didn't know he went into a three-day coma. Yeah. And while he was in hospital recovering, he studied rap and its history. And in just two years of releasing mixtapes, he was discovered by Dr. Dre in 2003, who signed him to Aftermath Entertainment. I actually rate the game. Like, he is a bit of a meme with his freestyles. But yeah, he is legitimately good. LAX Files. That is a bang. Great. And whatever album that's on, I can't remember. I know. I have it on my phone. Maybe. Probably not, actually. I don't. Uh, I'll keep going. Uh, he is most known for his lyrics. Red rolls, white ceiling. No body, no casket. Just blood spilling. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, um, you know what he's most known for? Just oh. name dropping. Like, he just... There's, like, that whole song. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, like, literally, like... My dog's at the door. Like, a hundred... Like, he literally says, like, a hundred names in it. <laughs> It's insane. What I want to know, though, like, with the freestyle that he's doing, like, the, the Red Rolls White Ceiling, have you seen the one where he's just, like, freestyling out in the car park and he's, like, just challenging people? Yeah. How Imagine shook if, would he be if, if the person he challenged that, just yeah. said Red Rolls White Ceiling? Yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> I wish they did that. <laughs> I wish they did, too. Now, jumping into the early 2010s, Mr. Dijon McFarlane, a.k.a. DJ Mustard, he kind of had to go with the name DJ Mustard, didn't he? With the name Dijon. Dijon. Yeah. Uh, he had his first major hit in December of 2011 with Tiger. Rack City. Yeah. Bitch. That's a classic. It is peaking at number seven. He has since become one of the most prominent hip-hop producers. This was around the time that K-Dot began to blow up. He was signed to Top Dog Entertainment in the early 2010s and is responsible for some of the best albums of all time. But you may not know him as K-Dot. This man, now known as Kendrick Lamar, is one of the best thought-provoking rappers of all time. Get Top Dog on the phone. <laughs> you mean Top Dog, like the guy that like raps with his phone like down here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him. What a beast. <laughs> Was that his name? Top Dog? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll look him up on YouTube now. But that's all I've got, so... Take it over. All right, we're going the on, east the, coast. on the East Coast. 